1987, this month of September. My brother, my sister, Peter Hubert McIntosh was a great reggae singer. He was one of the pioneers and inventors of reggae music, alongside Bob Marley and Bonnie O'Reilly Livingston. My brother, my sister, for over four hours, on his burial day of 25th September 1987, Peter Tosh and the rest of the fans and loved ones tasted the brunt of the sunlight and sunshine. It was a very sunny day as Peter Tosh was lying down in the coffin. And numerous teaming fans and family members all surrounded the whole park, getting ready to have Peter Tosh in Ted for good. For four solid hours, the National Arena rang out with its mystical music as thousands viewed the original whaler. For some, it was the very first time, and for the rest of them, it might just be the very last time. My brother, my sister, the following day there was a Thanksgiving service which was held in the same national arena. Afterward, Peter Tosh was driven 120 miles to his place of birth in West Molana because his mother, Alvira Cook, wanted him to be buried in his parish of birth, West Molana. There were controversies. Two men came up and said, they were the fathers of Peter Tosh, Alfred McIntosh, and James McIntosh. But the mother was still alive. Alvera Cook recognized James McIntosh as the father of Peter Hubert McIntosh. My brother, my sister, today we are looking at who killed Peter Tosh. What are the secrets behind? the death of Peter Tosh. We all know Peter Tosh was killed by a man called Dennis Lepo Loban. He was the one who tendered himself into the Kingston police after he was announced wanted by the police. My brother, my sister. And he was seen and recognized as the killer by Peter Tosh's own common law wife, Marlene Brown. My brother, my sister, he's since been in jail. Many people said that he took a rap for Peter Hubert McIntosh. Some guns were found in Peter Tosh's car. And the police were going to take Peter Tosh in and lock him up. And Dennis Lepoloban decided to take the rap and say that he was the one who put the guns in there. So he went to jail instead. And Peter promised to take care of him. But Peter did not do it. So when he returned from jail, he came to take Peter's life. My brother, my sister, but many have said that this is not a true story. Another reason Peter Hubert McIntosh could have been killed by Lepo, a.k.a. Dennis Loban, was the fact that he was a hired murderer, a killer. And he was just hired to go in there and kill Peter Hubert McIntosh. And he did his job and returned to jail. He's still in jail from 1987. My brother, my sister, today, I'm going to be telling you something that you have never heard. And if you have heard it before, then it's on this show. I'm going to be talking to my brethren in Jamaica. His name is Kojo Mambolo. Kojo Mambolo knew Peter Tosh when Peter Tosh was alive and walked this earth. Kojo Mambolo is a senior citizen of Jamaica. Kojo Mambolo has followed the life of Peter Hubert McIntosh and he's close to the family of Peter Tosh. Today he's going to be revealing deep secrets and this is a photo of Kojo Mambolo. He's going to be telling us deep secrets in the African history class. Why Peter Tosh was killed. 
and who was behind it. Remember, this is going to be very controversial. And these are the opinions of uh, Ojo Mambolu, whose photograph you see here. He's a senior citizen. He's called Kojo because of his African ancestry and heritage. He loves Ghana. And today you see him wearing his kente on top of his head. Kojo Mambolu is going to be telling us who killed Peter Tosh, who betrayed Peter Tosh, and why we should be taking his words very, very, very seriously. Again, it is very controversial. But please, listen to this with rapt attention as we go all the way to Kingston, Jamaica to find out who killed this great reggae legend and who also sold him out and betrayed him. Listen. Greetings, great people, or great Abyssinian people. Today, we are going to talk about loyalty. So, what is loyalty? It's not only we ballad politicians who are guilty of treachery and who is dangerous to the Jamaican people, you know. There are others, and there this loyalty, it depends on record by them very own hand. These men are among the most despicable me ever hear upon IRFM in 25 years. And only the Porsche government beat them. These individuals in the public space then belong to the lowest kind of deceivers today and should never be trusted. On September 11, 1987, Peter Tosh, yes, that same revolutionary Peter Tosh, him and him wife, Marlene, them dad them yard with some brethren, or so them did believe. Them did it with a man named Free Eye, a Baka High, a Baka Baka Shaka High, but them call him Free Eye. So them did it with Free Eye and him wife, Jai, and next brethren named Doc, another brethren named Mikey, and the next man named Carlton Davis, also known as Santa. And Santa play drum in a Peter band. This bogus man we are going to talk about is a man named Carlton Davis. This and them call him Santa M. because he is just as bogus as Santa Claus. This is three. It reminds me of a man we know years ago we used to call him Counterfeit. Now we have to remember say, people get these names for good reason because Counterfeit was really a counterfeit brother. Every nickname in a Jamaica based upon something a fuck, either upon how somebody look, how them talk, or how them behave. This is 3FM. So, on that fateful night of September 11, 1987, three gunmen got Peter Yard, stick up the security, enter the residence, stick up everybody, and after them shoot everybody, then flee the premises. Those who died was Peter, Free Eye, and Doc. Well, right after that, Jamaica and the world moan and moan and everybody get caught up in the death of Peter, Free Eye, and Doc. Doc was a juice man. He made the most nutritious natural juices. At that time, Free Eye did have him own revolutionary radio show. And he made work with Peter and some other man to set up them own radio station. Free Eye get rid of Babylon's name of Jeff Dixon and take on the name Free Eye, Baka High, Baka Shaka, Baka High. So you know, say, film show full of Afrocentric content and Afrocentric values. Now, Certain very important details of what happened that night remain hidden for 25 years until Marlene, Peter's wife, and she was one of the survivors, she talked to Muta Baruka from IRFM in a 2011. And in that interview, she provides some unbelievable details of what happened that night there. That interview there, they on YouTube, Muta and Marlene, you can't miss it. 
She explains uh, Santa, Santa Davis, who was also shot, ended up a short conversation with her before him go outside, jump in a vehicle, and drive himself to the hospital. You hear what she said? She said Santa says something to her, jump in a vehicle, and drive will left everybody, including Peter. Now, when you listen to what she say now, she tell Muta how she warned him not to drive away and left them, you know. That means that she never trust him in the first place. She never trust him for a long time. If she did trust him, she wouldn't say that. But it looked like everybody did too busy at doing them at door to pay attention to the psychological makeup and the personality of who and who are come around Peter and who Peter have around him. And that's why enough of them never like Marlene. Marlene did have a spiritual way to tell which one of them brother are yeah, not to stay around the place and which brother not to trust. And Santa was one of them brother there. Come and listen to a little part of what she said about that particular piece of incident that night. So anyway, I said to myself, said, no, Marlene, call myself. He's got to look out for Peter right now. Go to your neighbor. First thing come to me, say, beg his neighbor, say, beg anybody apart. We run, go to door and I bleed furious. Mr. said, tell us, when the man saw me, I bleed, the man speed up. Mr. said, Lord, when we look now, Mr. said, Santa Davis, cheap. So Mr. said, we to Come let me never remember, say Santa, and I also know. We won't go to Santa, Mr. Santa, Santa, Peter alive. Help me now, we can't see if Peter, you know, don't drive off and leave us. Help me try Peter go to the hospital now. Santa say, you know, say, me not help you, know, come get shot, you know. A straight uh, hospital, me have a money. Me not help you, know, come get shot. That is the exact word that Santa used to us. Me say, I want to drive off the Jeep, now hang on for the Jeep, so. So try to stop Santa, and say, no, nah, stop. Anyway, me let go off of the Jeep. I rush got to my neighbors. I say, as I rush got to my neighbor, my neighbor just run, come out. I said, Marlene. You hear what she said Santa do? She said Santa jump in her jeep and drive will left everybody. And the neighbor them do Santa work that night and carry everybody to the hospital. I couldn't believe me years. When the interview with Marlene done, I said to myself, anything can go so. Anything can really go so. But if it really go so, if I really saw it go, Santa is a real dirty boy. How can a man drive and leave him bridging them, especially in an emergency like that? How can Santa leave a man like Peter, an African revolutionary freedom fighter man like Peter? And even if you don't know the people them will get injured, you depend on a scene and you don't know the people them will get injured. How can a decent human being just drive away and left people with serious injuries? I said to myself, say, Santa, if I saw you go, you is nothing but a cold hearted beast. Nothing but a beast if I really saw it go. Well, the news depend on the street now. So you know, say, man and man and man and woman, I go talk. And after a while, it looked like somebody couldn't take the talking and the bad mouthing any longer. So guess who called Muta Show a couple years later? Santa himself, man. And during the conversation, it clear say him and Muta a good friend. That the interview also dip on YouTube and you have to listen to the two interview them to get the fullness of how wicked Santa is. Santa tell Muta say people are telling me Marlene I say and him have to respond to clear him name. You see, the people them who they around him, them never know these details before Marlene exposed them. And when them find out where really gone, them start deal with them away. Some start shake him out. Some might even not threaten him. So, him call Muta now for redeem himself. And never know, say, a dig him a go dig a, a deeper hole for himself. He a go dig a deeper grave. All through the conversation with Muta, you know, you could have said this boy is a real traitor. It clear, clear, based on what I say, Say Peter did not affect him as much as when Marlene say him say. 
He must start refer to Peter them like he no know them. All of a sudden they no have no name. Santa, you's a real dirty boy. And by the way, I wonder who really set up the shooting. I wonder who really, really set it up. This is three. We find say uh, everybody, including the woman them, them get shot in at them head. And some people like Carl Peter, him get shot two times in him head. Everybody get shot in at them head, except Santa. Santa get a little shot in at him shoulder. And since headshot usually deadly, obviously the man who shot Santa never want to kill him. Yes, them shot him, but obviously not to kill him. Here we say in a 1989, I'm going to tell you which part him get shot in the documentary name Peter Tash Shooting Funeral. He is the last speaker. I'm going to tell you say him get shot in him shoulder. Hear this. There was more than 30 shots. Bam, bam, bam. The second shot I got was in my head. Went right through. Here, one is here. And the other food is down here. This shot was one that came through Marlene's scalp and ended up in my mouth. I got shot in my shoulder. I got shot in my shoulder. I got shot in my shoulder. This is 3 you hear that? M. Him same get shot in him shoulder. But when you listen to him 25 years later in a 2013, it looked like his memory improved. And him no realize, say, him injuries, them worse than we him did remember right after the shooting. I will take with her. Now, all through the conversation with Muta, all the boy the pan is that if him never shake out, him would have dead too. Yes, him could have dead, but him could have also live. It's not everybody who get shot dead. As a matter of fact, more than 50% of them survive. And fame injury was the least of everybody. But even though fame injury was the least, listen to how Santa described them early in the interview. Yeah. For me, I said, Virgin, on the night of that incident, me was the most critically injured in mm. Out of all of the other ones where the, where the fatal, you see me, I said, yeah. out of everyone. So, even if, even if I want, even... You hear that? Hear what him say him injured the most? Now, hear how him go expand on him injuries a little bit later on in the interview. You yeah, understand so me, I say? Yeah. Well, he was the most critically injured one. And if me never look at even the, even the, the doctor and the nurse, I said, boy, you, you know, Mr. Davis, don't, don't, don't listen to what anybody have to say to you. What you did was the right thing. Because if you never do that, you never do it today. Yeah. You understand me, yeah. I say? Now, later... When him forget when him did say earlier about fame injuries and about the injuries of everybody else, hear when him say no. If a man got shot in foot or broke foot or broke hand and them thing there, then you can't carry a man because it's not a real life threatening thing. Yeah. But when a man get shot up them kind of way there and, and damage them way there, you can't just go take up people because you might do more damage to them. You see me I say? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 so when she has said them things about me, I don't know she does why. You hear when him say no? Early for boost him case, Santa say him have the most injuries. But here where the boy have a say about Peter now. And this have a show so a lie Mattel when he say him was the most critically injured. Here the boy have a say. Mm. Peter couldn't see him. You see me I say? Yeah. Even at the hospital did the next door. Mm. Peter couldn't see him. You see me I say? Yeah. yeah. Even at the hospital did the next door to the to the house. Mm. He couldn't see him. No, Santa. Carl it say you did dead trying to save Peter and the others. Our society and those who love Peter all over the world, them would have given you a massive and honorable send-off. Your name, it would have extend deep into the historical annals of Jamaica and would have resurfaced as a hero every time Peter named Carl. Instead, look on you now. 30 years later, and you still have to explain and I explain and I explain and I try to clear your name. It can't clear. It unclearable. Santa, if you have pitney, me sorry for them. 
They have to live with your legacy of cowardice and betrayal against a man who was loved and respected for him work liberating the African people. What a permanent disgrace you cause upon yourself this and your generation just to save your worthless life. Up to that time, a Peter life did have value, not yours. Your value time never come yet. However, your greatness would have automatically be recognized and guaranteed if you did dead while trying to save Peter and the others. Up to that fateful day, your measly contribution to reggae music as a drummer is a dime a dozen. Your common drumming style would never place you in the chronicles of reggae music in a large letters. And when you die, nobody would remember you outside of your immediate friends and family. And soon, even them would have forget you. The only thing up to now that would have guarantee you a preferred spot in the annals of reggae music and the history of Jamaica is if you did dead trying to save Peter and the others. Well, suppose you did live. If you did live, life couldn't better. You would be celebrated and respected every day, near and far. Instead, your drive will left your bridging them to save your worthless life. So today, when you die, as you will, your funeral will be private and you will be remembered most dishonorably. You will even be ill-spoken of even in debt. You never help your brother Santa, especially a man like Peter who moved from being a singer to a revolutionary and a hero to the people. He moved, but not you. FM. You were still a drummer. You never move. So what do you expect? As a result of your selfish deed, you're going to spend the rest of your lousy life explaining over and over again about what happened that night. And your listeners, all of them will come to the same conclusion that you is nothing but a low-down companion who cannot be trusted. This is 3F. One can't leave them brethren behind. You is nothing but a useless piece of protoplasm. Here is a piece of Santa. I try to defend himself, both when set to Marlene early in the conversation. You know, when me get shot and me go out the street and, and she come out there and ask me to help and, and me say, me not nah, carrying one of them things there. And me and I never had no kind of conversation. The only conversation me and I have, you know, that night there, you know, mm. was, was after the whole incident, you know, and, and everyone, I mean, me get up. And, and the only thing she said to me was, the only thing me remember she said to me, and that was the only time me and I had no conversation, was, yeah, all right. Me said, no, I'm going to get shot. I'm going to go to the hospital because I'm going to feel right. You know, feel car. You hear the foolishness? You hear how the boy has stumbled and a baba and weave just to explain whether or not a conversation take place. It clear that Santa still not get it. Him still wicked. Santa not upset because of what she say him do. What upset him is what she say him say. And that's the problem. Santa, you have it back way and upside down. What you do is a million times worse than anything you could have ever said. In other words, the details of the conversation where you call for dispute, that are the least. The crux of the matter, the problem where people have with you is that your driver left your brethren them. And your driver left them in an emergency when they did need you the most. And you know them people have for years and years. The shooter man, them gone, and your driver left everybody. That you can't deny. And it's that the problem. Not what you say. Who care about what you say? You are talking about what you do. Or didn't do. With friends like you, Santa, Ziggy don't need enemies. Santa, you must know the people around Ziggy must have talked about you. That means uh, Ziggy know say, if push comes to shove, or the same thing I'm gonna reach him. I'm sure say, the reason why you call Muta for you explain yourself is because you couldn't take it no more. You had a boss. You couldn't take the uncomfortable feeling where you get when you're there on Ziggy Man them and everybody else. 
So you call your friend to back you up. And yes, you did get some backup. Not much, but you get as much as you could have get. Santa, you must know the Ziggy, him friend and him family, they must know. Say, I must talk also behind your back. Say, if you do it to a man like Peter, you will do it to Ziggy. And America is a very violent place. It is very suitable for these things to happen. And Santa, me also know, say, if you have a wife, me sure so she don't trust you. You are a disgrace to the black race. Santa, the dead where you are run from soon catch up to you. Nobody live forever. I'm sure, say, your life since your treacherous act now include high levels of mental torment and distress because you know where the man and the woman on the street are about you. Your wicked act is now a burden upon your soul and that of your family. And that's why you call Muta years later to see if you can clean it up. But you never succeed. You only confirm, say, you is a beast. And if you still have on your locks, you have cut it. You is not worthy if you wear such a revolutionary symbol. You turn doctor now and refuse to help everybody but yourself and call yourself a raster man. You is nothing but a bogus man. A dirty bogus man. Mr. Lord, when we look now, Mr. Santa Davis Jeep. So Mr. Waiter, come let me never remember Mr. Santa and also now. We won't go to Santa, Mr. Santa, Santa, Peter alive. Help me now, we can't see if Peter, you know. Don't drive off and leave us. Don't drive off and leave us. Help me try Peter go to hospital now. Santa say, you know, so I'm not helping him come get shot, you know. A straight uh, hospital never have a man. I'm not helping him come get shot. That is the exact word that Santa used to us. I say, oh, when I'm going to drive off a Jeep, I hang on for the Jeep, so. So try to stop Santa and say, no, nah, stop. Marlene words make sense and them is consistent with the circumstance and your behavior which you did not deny. And you didn't deny it because you know say other survivors will have come out and confirm and say yes you drive and left everybody. Anyhow everybody did dead and left you one. Nobody would have known say you did drive and left them. You would have tell pure lie say I chase you I chase the gunman them and that's why you end up a street. Santa, me sure say you know the pan speaking terms with none of the other people them who survive. Me sure say all of them consider you the lowest of the low. As a matter of fact, me sure say enough people who you didn't know before, them stop dealing with you. You literally have your hide in a California. You can't go shop, much less a big social event. Nobody know in you know nothing with you. Santa Davis, you is a disgrace to the black race. You is a fraud. You is one of the most despicable and disloyal persons who come from Jamaica. And I want to tell you, say, me consider you worse or worse or than them brother there who do the shooting. If you did do the right thing, anyhow you did do the right thing, Santa, Peter could have still alive today. Your man him could have still be alive today. You is nothing but a hustler who try to grab a few dollars here and there. You have no interest in Rastafari, much less the revolutionary message where Peter preached. You deserve your miserable mental existence since 1987. Now, because Santa knows him out of him, he prearrange and receive a very non-critical interview. Yes, them did have a private interview where them discuss where them will say upon the public interview. And this public interview clearly show Sir Muta still was Santa as Muta himself admit to. But based upon what Santa do, based upon what Santa do, that wicked act of betrayal should have automatically cancel any debt where Muta was Santa and him should have replaced it with a trial. But that never happened. Well, Santa Davis. Today, you have been found guilty of betrayal against your brethren and sisters. You represent one of the lowest kinds of life form to exhibit life on this earth. As a result, you are sentenced to California with your so-called white frenemies until they end your miserable life. You know say so you're not welcome in a Jamaica. And people like you, you now have no interest in Africa. 
Santa, everybody you know, including those around you, and even those you don't know, them know you. Them know the kind of useless garbage you is. Them know, say, you cannot be trusted regardless of what you say. And you see it? It is so ironic. The show will expose you to the world as a big germs is a show name, The Stepping Razor. Oh, Peter Hubert Markintosh. Namri Fadwe, Ode Nyamenko Wate, Ode Nyamenko, oh, it brings tears into my eyes. Now this tape is talking about Santa Davis. He was the drummer for Peter Hubert Markintosh, Santa Davis. And when the gunman did come in, Dennis Loban, he shot everybody in the house in the head. And this is Santa Davis. He shot everybody in the head except Santa Davis. He shot him in the shoulder. Why did he shoot everybody in the head? And Santa Davis alone was shot in the shoulder. And after the gunman left, Santa Davis decided to leave the house and run into his Jeep to drive away. The common law wife of Peter Tosh, Marlene Brown, now came out of the house and walked up to Santa Davis and said, Santa, where are you going? Peter is still alive. Some of the people are still alive. Please help them to the hospital. And he said, I was shot too. I cannot carry anybody. And drove to the hospital. My brother, my sister, Marlene Brown now came out and shouted in the area. People came out and took Peter Tosh, who was still alive, to the hospital. Minutes later, he died. Could it have been a plot? Now, my very good brethren, Kojo Mambolo, is saying that if Santa Davis had even the courage to try and save Peter, and had died, he would have been worthy than the worthless life he's living right now as the lowest of the low of all protoclasms, in his own words. This brings tears into my eyes. You can feel the depth of knowledge this man has. And you can feel the depth of bitterness and anger Kojo Mambolo has against Santa Davis. My brother, my sister, it draws tears from my eyes. Today, Dennis Lapoloban is still in jail for life, for killing Peter. But Santa Davis is not able to go to Jamaica because he's scared that if he goes, he might be shot same way Peter was shot and killed. Because these people still believe that he probably had a hand in the murder of Peter. If he didn't, why did he not save him? But he ran away, leaving all other injured people. And the excuse he gave was that, oh, I was also shot. And the way they were shot, even if the hospital was next door, there was no way Peter Tosh could have survived it. He was shot two times in his head and several times in his chest. But when they arrived at the hospital, he was still alive. In this month of September, the 11th day in 1987, Peter Hubert Mackintosh breathed his last. Oh, Papa. <laughs> yeah, Papa. Let me see me new Papa. Papa, Papa, who didn't mean go? Oh, who didn't mean go? Who didn't mean go? Damn, refund you, Papa. Who didn't mean go? Peter Hubert Mackintosh, born in 1944. He said bye-bye to us in 1987 through the trigger of the gunman who opened fire into his herd and shot him several times in his chest. Right after that, the man cool. But before he was even shot, 
The gunman asked him to kneel down. He went on his knees. He said, lie down. Him did lay down. And him tell him if he open up him mouth. And him I go get shot in and him dot him out. Now Peter tell him, sir, don't shoot me. Go in and take everything where you want. Him say, him want money. Him say, me don't have no money. But he anything where you want. Just walk around in the house and see anything where you have. Anything where you want, take it. The man sit down and watch him. And him say, jump down. Jump up. Jump down. And him open fire upon him. Him kill him. Today we remember you, Papa. Uni yamiko. Uni yamiko wate. Tu tu gwavi. Tu tu gwavi.